Hiya, and welcome back to Far Beyond the World, the game that teaches us that sometimes your worst enemy is your closest ally. I'm going to find a good place for this. Hmm. I can't think of anything else to say, so let's just hop right in. Seeing them leave, both Chief and Vither exchange relieved looks and return to a casual conversation. I watch as the elderly female struggles to stand up, her arms shaking as they strain against her own weight. Her friends pay her no mind as she, and she is effectively left behind. I come to her side, gently sliding my hand under her arm and aiding her to her legs. My, what a gallant little pup. She mutters, drawing approving gazes to the chief and his friend. Lend your paw until the doors, won't you? She points to the exit and I nod. Her walk is quite uncertain, and she takes her time between each step. It was nice meeting you, young man. Do you like playing games? She asks idly, but I don't respond. I used to love playing games when I was a little pup. My mother often took me to visit with my father in the neighboring tribe. Oh, such fun we would have. He would always come up with the silliest of larks. Her genuine cheer brings a smile to my face. But only one has been my utmost favorite throughout the years. To spot a true wolf. She lifts her finger, bopping it into the distance. You see, there are only two types of people in this world. Wolves in sheepskins, and sheep in woven coats. The female leans in, whispering as if revealing a secret. A true wolf is no fool. He lies in wait, patiently gauging his prey, only to engage when it favors his pack. She straightens up again. And then you have the sheep, parading around full of bluster and hubris, flaunting their fake coats like shields. You and I know the truth. A piece of fur is no armor. It's only their bluster that fools the rest. But not the real wolves. Real wolves know they only have to lay in wait for the right time. Hello. <laughs> My heart skips a beat as I begin to think she's not what she appears. Her ear twitches again, and her eyes center on me with a smile. It's good to see another wolf around. This village has become a pasture as of late. She sighs, and we arrive at the doorway, and I release her from the hold. She bows her head respectfully, and I reciprocate the gesture. With the last of the elders gone, the two remaining, the remaining two wolves seem to have regained some of their usual humor I associate them with. I take turns with Trist, rotating the spit, trying not to draw much attention to either of us. The chief simply vents off his steam and engages Vither in the mocking of the two... That left. I quite understand them, really. Hello. Seriously. I'm, I'm dead serious, though. If the day that Anel dies is the... D if, if anything were to happen to Anel, I would... Kill everyone in this tribe and then kill myself. I I could not I do not I cannot bear to see Anel die. I will fucking kill myself the day Anel dies. That might be a bit of an exaggeration. Um hang on, let me find one. Uh, here we go. Let me just add her to the thing. Uh, where's it at? Here we go. Um, okay. Here, uh, transform. Uh, flip horizontal. Here we go. Honestly, she is. She really is, and I am serious. Like, she, she's like the sweet grandma who just, like, who will, like, um, like, read you a story and then proceed to get upset with you because you didn't grab a snack to eat while she was telling the story. I feel like she'd do that. You know, just... Here we go. Give her all the love. There we go. <laughs> I, 
I wish I could work off some steam myself. They did get under my skin. Especially with how fixated they seemed on Rannoch. Once the chickens are done, Trist removes them from the spit and places them on silver plates. He garnishes them with some of the garden roots and vegetables to make the dishes look more presentable to the wolves. It might be weird to have her just sitting there. We place the platters around them, plenty of food for the two males, and they begin to idly pick at their meals. Poor fellas, suffered hell of abuse. Good thing they couldn't understand it, eh? Ugh, the fucking things are more trouble than they're worth. The chief sneers at us, but I don't mind. He's still seething, and so would I if someone threatened my son like that. We simply take a step back to give them some space. Come now, they're without fault here, you know that. Vither places his paw on his friend's shoulder, and the other male sighs in defeat. I know. But I cannot help blaming the human for this perilous situation. The brown male tries to speak, but the chief raises his hand to cut him off. Even if he is without fault, he put Rannoch in grave danger. And Rannoch put him in such an, put him in such in turn. They're riding in the same cart, friend. I don't despise that whelp. The chief sighs and waves his paw at me. In fact, he seems a positive factor. Rannoch's changed since his arrival. The decision to undertake the search took me by surprise. That's a true wolf behavior. I thought he would always remain a pup. See? Vither smiles. We have to see this through, no matter where the chips may fall. Besides, if not the human, Aldris would find another reason to get on our case. We were in perfect mutual check thus far. This human introduces an element of chaos I do not like. We were dancing to their tune for 20 years, old friend. This might be an opportunity to take away their fiddles. I hope so. I do hope so. The chief nods and waves his paw inviting both waves his paw invitingly at both me and Trist. We approach cautiously, Trist more so than I do as he clearly didn't understand where this conversation went. To his surprise, the chief passes us one of the plates we just arranged. Here, eat. He grumbles, nodding towards the far end of the table. We both bow respectfully and take the plate with us to the designated area. Trist gives me looks of utter disbelief as we take our seats. With some distance between us, the wolves return to their idle banter, Vither trying to cheer up his friend with some jokes and reminiscing. The chief seems to enjoy their conversation about a joint love interest from years past. Apparently, she had a pair of tits one could bury his muzzle in. Okay then. To each their own. I noticed the bunny's reluctance at eating the chicken, and I wonder for a moment I wonder for a moment if he's not a vegetarian, but his hungered expression quickly dispels this notion. <laughs> I think he's worried it's some kind of trick. I take the lead and simply cut off a strip from the breast and put it into my mouth. Mmm. Immediately I'm hit with a delicious blend of roasted chicken, th thyme, and coriander. All that time turning the damned spit was worth it. Seeing my liberty and enjoying the meal and no following repercussions, the bunny finally joins me. I wish we could have engaged in similar banter at our, as our betters, however, we have to be mute. The meal and the scenery is enough to entertain us for as long as it takes to clean the chicken to the very bone. Through all this time, the chief and Vither didn't ask even once for our help. The brown male were, f were filling their cups himself and fetching things from the cupboard on his own. In fact, that's pretty much what he was doing from the very beginning. Seems we were at the whims of those two old fart, those two old farts. Those two old farts need to shut the fuck up. When we're finished with our meal, the chief dismisses us and Trist leads me back into the pantry. I help out with bringing various plates back into the room and we save up the lasting foods by either putting them back into their respective containers or leaving on the plates for later consumption. Perishables are dumped into a barrel that serves as, dis as a disposal bin. Apparently, they use it for composting later, which again shows that nothing's really wasted here. I immediately think of recycling, which is a very- this is a very green society, which makes sense since they live in a forest. Once the tables are empty and wiped clean, the bunny sighs. This was quite a workout. Good work. Good leave. The chief waves at us, and I almost smirk at his uncharacteristic broken speech. By Trist's annoyance, I deduce he was, a, he was again using Old Sylvan. We both bow respectfully and walk towards the entrance. Once we're in the atrium, Tris takes a seat on one of the couches. He reclines back, resting against the wall, and I look around as he pats a spot beside him. Are we allowed to? Only the chief lives here and he's busy right now. What if someone sees us? 
All the attendants are bunnies. None of my kin will sell you out if you're at my side. Besides, I have good ears. I'll hear anyone approaching. Huh. I smile, taking a seat and resting my back. Damn, this cushion feels good. My feet are killing me. I look at my abused legs. I really need some shoes. I'd say it's your heart that's going to be your end. Hmm? You were quite rattled in there. I guess I should be thankful I cannot understand them. <laughs> yeah. Did you learn anything, little spy? The bunny winks at me playfully, and I grimace. More than I would like. Seems Rannoch pretty much has a target on his back. Yeah, they do seem to dislike him a whole lot. Maybe, but now it seems more serious. The chief was very riled up. I saw that. And the elders? Ugh. I sigh, shivering slightly. They seem one step away from deposing the chief. Triss looks into the distance, clearly thinking over what I have just said, and a short, fa and a short pause falls b upon us. He seems uneasy, and I give him an encouraging gaze. Look, in all honesty, I didn't mean half the things I said about your master. If you can even call him that. I raise my brown confusion. I know he doesn't see himself as such. He tried to be friendly with me, I just I couldn't bring myself to give him a chance. But I do see he's different. They all are. Who? The young wolves. They're from a different stock. Even Varok and Vithar are. The elders are the warmongering, bloodthirsty savages stuck in the past. The bunny almost sneers, his choppers on full display. Varok put an end to raids and pillaging. In fact, as much as I hate to admit it, Turdin began prospering under his rule. The force didn't experience war in a generation. Such lengthy peace, it's a much-needed breathing space. He readjusts himself, begrudging his own confession. Although still very much oppressive, Varok loosened the iron grip on the Sylvan folk. We're allowed to practice our faith again, and even some of the wolves return to the old ways. The elders resent that. I ponder his words for a moment. Seems like Rannoch wants to continue the course taken by his father. He wants even more change. I guess that's enough for the elders to despise the mere idea of him. It's not just that. I don't understand much of the going-ons here, but I gathered Rannoch has hampered one of their schemes. How? I don't know. Trist shrugs, slightly defeated. It happened before I arrived here. All I know is that, some, is that it somehow involved that white wolf you danced with. You mean Tano? Yeah. Huh. The plot thickens. But Rannoch and Tano are very much at odds, at least three years now. It's hard to imagine the two of them working together against the elders. Unless that's what they fell out over? I considered discussing this further, but again, I just met the bunny. I shouldn't divulge Rannoch's private matters to everyone. Especially since his life seems to be hanging in the balance, and as the chief said himself, it could be one to tip the scales. Sorry. I could be one to tip the scales. I feel extremely unsettled, and my heart speeds up a little. What is it? I worry about Rannoch. I worry because I don't know what dangers lurk out in those woods, but worse yet, even if he returns, his life is still in peril. More the reason to keep your head down. He boffs me with his shoulder. The only way you can help him is by not accidentally tripping him over. Easier said than done. Rannoch has many friends, and it's clear he has, he has one in you as well. I try not to blush at his frankness. Just make sure he doesn't lose them. He'll need all the allies to weather the coming storm. Storm? Trist looks at the floor for a moment and sighs. There's a war brewing. The entire force whispers about it. We don't know with whom and when, but it's coming. Why did you think I was so intent on figuring you out? He jumps off the couch. I just don't want my people to get caught in between again. If I'll learn anything that would be to your kin's detriment, I will tell you. I promise. I know. The bunny nods, giving me a genuine smile. I can smell deceit and danger, one of the perks of being a prey-kin. You're too much all over the place to be a threat. I smile back and stand up, trying to extend my hand. This doesn't mean I trust you. He mutters reluctantly, eyeing me out. But I suppose we can have a truce for the time being. Trist sighs and we shake on it. I'll take that over your stink eye any day. Is it that effective? The bunny chuckles and I join his mirth. You have no idea. Good to know. As we walk outside, Trist turns to face me with an inquisitive look. Are you okay to head back on your own? Hmm? Silence. Since it's my first short day in a while, I'd like to unwind with my friends. Oh yes, of course. I nod eagerly. I'll be fine. The path is quite straightforward. Yeah.
first thing that came to mind was Game of Thrones. Winter's coming. So is acting your grunt, yet you managed to mess that up. <laughs> I smirk, shaking my head. Just don't stray off the path. These woods are easy to get lost in. I nod again and wave the bunny goodbye as he heads towards his dorm. My, what a day. The walk back is quite refreshing and gives me a chance to digest everything that happened today. The elders proved everything Rannox said and more. I cannot stand the thought of those two nasty beasts. And Nell, on the other hand, although nice, she's an enigma. And considering my current situation, surprises are not exactly welcome. I'm glad I was able to get to know the bunny a bit more. Now I understand his motives at the very least. He simply is trying to survive while at the same time looking out for his people. I'll do the exact same thing had our roles were reversed. I close my eyes, taking in the air and the sounds, trying to get rid of all the negative negativity accumulated because of those two old farts. This fairy tale slowly takes on a dangerous turn. I get back to the village without any problems, and my head is slightly clearer. The tribe's wolves gives me a few funny looks as I pass through the main square, but nothing more. I try to give a glance towards Vol's shop, but we're still ignoring each other, I suppose. If Vol wants to act like a pup, so be it. What is that dog doing? I sigh and walk down the path leading towards Rannoch's house. Hey there, pet! I look at the brown female rushing out from Vither's house to greet me. She's carrying a small wicker basket filled with some bread and pastries. Been waiting for you. My father asked me to give you those upon your return. And of course, Verissa returns the basket. The girl exaggeratedly points to herself, the shop, and the basket. Take them. She pushes them into my hands and I cannot help but smile and bow graciously. Indeed, an apple didn't fall far from the tree. I'm glad to see you in good spirits. Going to the villa can be quite stressful, especially with those grouches around. I look at her wide-eyed and she mimics an old, hunched person shouting into the distance. Oh boy, you said it, sister. Ugh, drat, you don't understand me, do you, sweetie? She frowns and I just try to maintain my dumbfounded expression. Hmm, let's see. If you... The female gently touches my chest. You, sad, scared. She pantomimes those expressions and I really struggle internally not to erupt in laughter. <laughs> Come here. Her two fingers stride the air as she points out Vither's shop. Okay? She asks hopefully, and I just sigh, nodding in gratitude. Damn it, girl, I really want to not like you, but you make it impossible. Good. She smiles and plants a kiss on my cheek. I'm actually stunned, rubbing the spot where her nose has just touched me, trying to conceal a blush. See you later, pet. She returns to her home, and I think it's better I get out of sight before I draw someone's ire. Home, sweet home. I mutter under my breath, really glad to see the cottage again. I ain't risking it. I ain't risking it. I jump over the uneven step and regard the porch. Tonight's the night when I'll enjoy myself out in the open, just taking in the beautiful scenery. After the week I had, I deserve a little vacation. Plus, the smell of the woods outside reminds me so much of him. Ugh, I miss Rannoch so much. I plop the basket next to the door. As I pass the table, I gently touch the dandelion to steady my emotions. The trek up to the villa and back again really took the wind out of my lungs. I guess my stamina is lower than my thought. The earlier cleanup didn't help either. I take a cup and pour myself some water, drinking it up in one go. I decide to rest up a bit so I walk to the bedroom and plop onto the bed. My legs are killing me and my eyelids feel extremely heavy. I simply need to close my eyes for just a moment. I don't sleep well. In fact, I'm having a bit of a nightmare. My torturous dreams finally forces me awake sometime well into the evening. Damn. As I open my eyes to see the cottage flooded with darkness, I take a relieved sigh. Hang on. He's like picking up the right thing. Let me check real quick. He's like picking up the right... Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know for a second. Um... Yeah. It is. Picking up the right device. As I open my eyes to see the cottage flooded with darkness, I take a relieved sigh. I can't remember what I dreamt about. All I know is it had something to do with Rannoch. At least no whispers were involved this time, so I can easily brush it off to my worrying. I get up and walk to the kitchen. There's still ashes from the morning, but I'm too lazy to get this sorted now. I simply stack new pieces of wood and start a fire. One strike, two strikes, and the kindling is burning. I'm getting better at this. Within moments, the room floods with warm hues and I decide to light up the candles as well. I'm still tremendously tired, but I need a moment respite from my uneasy sleep. 
I am worried that I might have stank up the dress during my rest, but it was airy enough to prevent me from sweating. I really ought to be more careful with it. I won't be going to bed dressed up like that. It's disrespectful. My gaze ventures towards the window and I see the moon high up above the treetops. It's such a lovely night and I remind myself of the promise I made this morning. Day or night, nothing stops me from enjoying the lovely views on the porch. I pet softly the dandelion as I rustle about the kitchen gathering some nibbles to take out with me. I place two rolls, a sausage, and some cheese onto a plate and fill a tankard of ale. Unwinding like this was a dream come true ever since I realized this place had a porch. I creak the door open and take a step outside, immediately walking towards the table. My skin shivers slightly as I take a seat. The chair is quite cool, but it's a welcome sensation. I just admire the scenery and wet my lips, noticing a faint glow of a fireplace in the distance. Rannox said that's where the sentries camp sometimes. I flash my brows and simply return to unwinding, stargazing, and breathing the wonderful scent of the forest. It's almost as if he's here with me. I wish we could share a drink. I raise my mug towards the moon, knowing the very same ardent spheres watching over my wolf wherever he is. Your health, wolf. Stay safe. I'm out here maybe half an hour to an hour, just trying to clear my mind and get ready for the sleep proper, when I suddenly feel something strange. It's almost as if I'm being watched, and for the first time I feel uneasy here. I raise up, looking around the nearby bushes, but I cannot notice anything. The incredibly disturbing feeling persists, and I'm becoming more and more alarmed. It's like my prey mentality triggered for no reason. Which makes me think, there must be a reason. I throw my gaze towards a faint campfire in the distance. It's maybe 100, 200, 200 meters away. I think I should alert someone. I get up to my feet and walk towards the stairs, instinctively jumping over the uneven stone. As I'm on the path, I take clear direction of the campfire and head for it with a determined gait. I manage 10, 20 paces perhaps when two familiar wolves step out of the shadows to intercept me. Tyron, don't. It's the guards that tackled Rannoch the day I was discovered. Hey! Hey you! Stop! What are you doing? The warrior that stood guard over me tries to restrain his friend, but he's not budging. Instead, the wolf appro approaches me with barely contained snarl, and I wonder what his intentions are. Told you we should have kept an eye on him. Oh, so they caused my weird unease. I almost want to laugh it off, as I was actually going to fetch them on their own account. He can't just go wandering around the village. Well, he does have Rannox crust on the collar. He's no ordinary slave. And another wolf that calls a rose by its name. As an attendant, he's expected to run errands. In the middle of the night, Rannox's not even here. Drare, I'm seriously done fucking with Rannox and his bullshit. Sorry, look, I'm seriously... He finally snaps, pushing the other wolf away from me. My father is still pissy after we raided his house, and a dislocated shoulder was high enough price to pay for tackling him. I'm not fucking around with this pet as well. He points to me, and again I feel a bit sad that he got roughed up. The other wolf gives me a look of utter contempt. He can barely keep his fangs from showing. That's just not right. Having this creep... What are you two doing? Vol's voice reaches us from behind, and we all wince, surprised by a sudden appearance. Vulgor! We just noticed this one sneaking out. Sneaking out? The black male raises his brow, sto stopping right beside me. Was he also watching me? How many eyes in this damned woods are centered on this cottage? Nope, I haven't noticed anything. It was all his idea. Drer offers a hasty excuse, pointing to his defiant companion. Is that so? I mean, you know, he shouldn't... Why would we... Tyron stutters and finally cuts himself off, seeing Vol's brow ray rises higher and higher. Damn, the Black Wolf sure knows how to intimidate everyone into submission. Didn't realize this piglet was under house arrest. Are you two now charged with guarding Rannox's property? N no Oh. By fucking Batman. <laughs> Vol feigns surprise. So, your duty tonight wasn't to harass his livestock. No. What is your duty, then? Sentry duty. Just as I was about to remind this idiot. Again, Drer tries to pull his friend away, finally managing to budge the wolf from his spot. If you were in my pack and I would... And I would find you away from your post? Forgive us, it won't happen again. Vither's son bows respectfully, cutting the blackmail off. Make sure it won't. Now fuck off, scrubs. Both wolves bow deeply and hastily retreat towards their campfire. I've heard that word before, scrub. What's that mean? Ah. Yeah, I didn't know what it meant.
Both will... Uh, I cannot contain a smile at their co at their complete show of def deference and submission, but is quickly wiped away by Vol's scornful look. it at download Ugh. yeah that's gross let me try and find one that doesn't suck Ugh. here we go top png this one's good <laughs> I cannot contain a smile at their complete show of deference and submission, but is quickly wiped away by Vol's scornful look. What are you do what are you doing, Piglet? You're mistaking this for some sort of getaway. You're in danger. Do not go outside at night. He states sternly and I point towards the cottage. I was just sitting out on the porch. Something made me feel uneasy, as if I was being watched, so I wanted to fetch the sentries. Turns out they were the ones stalking me. The black male scoffs and proceeds to walk towards the house. As I come to his side, I cannot fight the urge to call him out as well. They weren't the only ones stalking me, though, were they? Hmm... He frowns, but surprisingly, he doesn't take it badly. I was only looking out for you. I know you're an impulsive little piggy. I had to. I, I simply had to. It takes one to know one. <laughs> he stops looking back at me with a shocked gaze, but quickly turns away. His expression changes. However, it's something quite different from what I expected. He's hurt, and instead of his normal lashing out, he simply storms off towards the village. Vol, wait! I try to catch up, but he's not slowing down. Please, can we just talk about this? There's nothing to talk about. I grab his paw and try tugging at it, but he's having none of it. His other paw takes a long swing ready to send me into the dirt, and I close my eyes. As I expect the hit, his paw just stops inches away from me. He stands there, rattled and looking back at me with disbelief. Full. I plead calmly, and his shock only grows. He's stunned that I'm not afraid, that I do, that I do not flinch. As far as I'm concerned, you haven't broken your word. You haven't hurt me, because I chose not to be hurt. You promised Rannoch you'll take care of me. That's a word I cannot keep on your behalf. His brows curve upward in a sorrowful expression, and I can see I hit the nail. I don't want this poison to fester between us. We might not be friends, but I know this will eat at you and affect your relationship with him. With her! You're an honest wolf. Try to be an adult one, too. And then it happens. Something I never expected to see. Vol's lips curl up in a snarl, but it's not directed at me. I can see the anger brewing inside of him as his eyes well up. No. No! He's furious with himself, unable to process the emotions that he kept bottled up, bottle, bottling up for so long. No. Mm -mm. I got a whole cask of beer in there, and knowing now that there, there, knowing now there's a porch, you don't have to worry about looking defective by stepping inside the house at night. I try to ease the mood by introducing some levity, and surprisingly, it works. He scoffs at me in amusement, somehow managing to suck up the unspent tears. He's too much of a wolf to shed even a single one. Come. I bid him to follow, and we walk towards the house. We don't have to talk if you don't want to. Just enjoying beer in each other's company will do. I rush into the kitchen, grabbing a spare chair and dragging it outside. I place it on the other side of the table, inviting the male to take a sit. As he makes himself comfortable, I run back inside to fetch him a mug of ale. 
I dip the tankard into the barrel and carefully bring it outside. Here you go. Thanks. He mutters indifferently, not really regarding me. I take my seat and try not to stare at him. Silence overtakes us and we're simply taking sips interchangeably. Minutes pass and it's clear that the black wolf is mulling over something. His expression doesn't betray much, but his eyes fixated in the distance indicates, indicate he's very much focused. I wonder whether perhaps I should try to engage him, but I remember what Varissa said. I need to give things time. Just the sheer fact he accepted the invitation is enough. I really don't want to fuck it up by being pushy. And so my patience is rewarded. After a few more minutes, the wolf finally sighs and breaks the silence. I shouldn't have done that. The world's ending. I shouldn't have done that. He nods towards my neck. No, you shouldn't. I nod slowly, taking an idle sip of ale. But I understand why you did. He doesn't regard me. His red irises are set on the wood in front of us. Despite his stoic mask, I know he's struggling deep inside. If he didn't have any qualms, I wouldn't. He would. If I. If he didn't have any qualms, he wouldn't agree to sit down with me. I want to reassure him that despite everything, I do not condemn him. I know you're not a monster, Vol. At least I'd like to believe you aren't one. What do you know? He mutters under his breath. Nothing. I shrug. But I follow my compass and it tells me to trust you, despite the fact that a part of me is screaming, Fly, you fool! I chuckle and he scoffs in amusement, finally looking at me with a half-smile. Perhaps you should listen to your survival instinct. Is that what you'd like? For everyone to be afraid of you and keep their distance? What I'd like is for our lives to be simple again. Guess there's not much chance for that. The wolf takes a long, deep swig and stands up. For a moment, I think he's about to leave, but instead he simply heads to inside to refill his mug. I wait patiently, gazing towards the stars and the moon. I've noticed that I cannot re recognize a single constellation, not even Orion, which I'm sure should be visible since it's early spring. I approach the balustrade, balustrade, and lean out to cast my gaze across the sky. Nope, not a single familiar star. I chuckle, taking another sip. I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. Seeing Vol return, I straighten up and sit back. He's licking off the excess liquid from his overflowing mug. The wolf plops heavily onto his chair and takes a deep breath. I pick up the plate and pass it to him, offering some nibbles. Heh, <laughs> good pet. Much better at your job than that scowling bunny, that's for sure. I almost blush at the compliment, but the jabatrist spoils the moment a little. He's coping with a shitty situation. Hmm? Vol gives me a curious glance while munching on a piece of sausage. I return the plate back to the table and sigh in resignation. They're not exactly here of their own free will, are they? Where's this coming from? Everyone seems to have an issue with him, just because he's not grateful for being kidnapped. Like, how else is he supposed to act? The black wolf looks into the distance, thinking over my words, and I wonder if I should perhaps leave this topic alone. But Vol is full of surprises. It's one of the reasons why I refuse to ward. Huh? I blink. As one of the top wolves, you're expected to have a bunny cater to your every whim. I hate that idea. It makes one meek and decadent. Serves no real purpose other than to inflate one's ego at the expense of another. I'm taken aback by his words. I did not expect Vol to be this deep. Rannoch hates this bullshit as well. It's the elders who insist. Keeps the other kid in check, as they say. If I'm to be honest, I wonder why those bunnies don't slit our throats in our sleep. His words startle me a little. In all fairness, Trist seems like he does hate most of his betters. I'm unsettled by the idea that there might be some trouble brewing. Oh, not to worry, Piglet. Vol picks up on my slight distress. It was a rhetorical question. They don't do anything because they know we'd retaliate against their burrows. You can sleep safe. Yeah, that does not exactly lighten the mood. I frown and fall silent. Seems like none of us is happy about this whole situation, other than those nasty yo nasty ger geriatric bigots. Why do they even get a say in anything? If this society is so meritoc meritocratic, what possible contribution those geezer what possible contributions those geezers could make other than spewing their outdated dogma? I know you're upset with him. He pulls me out of my stupor. Hmm? That's why he left, right? He must have felt mishandled and lashed out. Even Trist was acting out, but he didn't speak. You can only imagine what verbal beating you're giving him. But he really tries to do good by others. Always did. You mean Rannoch? He nods, closing his eyes. I can assure you he's as much uncomfortable with forcing you into this situation as you yourself are. It's just how things work around here. If he wants to change it, he needs to play his part and compromise. Yeah, I get that. I try to reassure him. 
True, I did get annoyed at first, but as the time went by, I understood every intention behind Ranox's actions. He was trying to shield me from uncomfortable truths, while at the same time accommodating me in every possible way. I'm actually awaiting his return. Quite impatiently, might I add. You're fine, Piglet. He snickers, taking a long chug. You don't need him. You're quite capable as you are. You just need to believe in yourself more. You survived the villa. That's not an easy feat. And from what I heard from Vither, you did quite well, all things considered. The wolf winks at me, and I must admit, it feels good to be praised like this. Rannoch seems to underestimate you. He means well, but sometimes you have to let others stumble and get up on their own. This little separation is a good way to jumpstart your self-reliance. Hmm. Vol notices my confusion and takes another gulp. When you're dependent on someone, you're at their side out of necessity. Only when you truly don't need another is when the choice to be with them becomes apparent. That's when it means the most. Yeah. I agree, trying to follow his suit, but I'm nowhere near as accustomed to the bitter brew. If you are his path, you need to at least stand beside him, rather than drag behind. Rannoch has a tendency to be lenient and to cradle everyone he meets. Despite appearances, is not exactly a healthy nor helpful trait. Yeah, I get your point. The wolf empties his mug in one go and clanks it on the table. He stands up, this time ready to depart for real. I can hear he's struggling with something and I give him a moment. Eventually, he looks back at me with a worried expression. I still have to tell him what I've done. No, there's no need. I protest calmly, standing up and coming to his side. This is between me and you, okay? I made the promise to him. I nod, placing a hand on his shoulder. I know. But is it not up to me to decide whether I was hurt or not? He doesn't even acknowledge me, again locking his gaze with something in the distance. Look, it's forgiven and forgotten. Why make a fuss about it? Rannoch is extremely protective of me. He wasn't there, and you're not exactly subtle with words either. He'll think what he'll think that God knows what happened. I try to reason with him. I don't want this to become some sort of issue between you guys. But Vol. I cut him off with a plead. Since you're talking so much about me standing up for myself, leave Rannoch out of it. For my sake, so he doesn't cradle me more than he already does. He takes a pause, and then sighs heavily. Very well, but I still feel like I'm getting off too easy. Good! I agree with a smile. Then as penance, you must promise me, we'll do this again. I raise my still half-full mug to him and he smirks. Heh, <laughs> cheeky little piggy. I'll see you around. huge smile on my face. He nods and hops off the porch, avoiding the steps completely. I watch as he walks towards the village and try to enjoy the remainder of my ale. Having resolved this little spat, I feel like I'm able to just to sleep just fine. I give one final gaze towards Aluna, downing my drink and thinking of my wolf. Sleep well. As I stand up, I notice a shiny little trinket on the edge of the table where Vol sat. I pick it up to reveal the black wolf's IOU. I smile, shaking my head. I might have become one of the few people, if not the first person to have his token. With that, I gather the things and head inside. Tomorrow's another day. Daybreak comes quick enough and I'm already rustling around the house getting cleaned and dressed. My morning routine is brought to a halt when I notice something troubling. The dandelion, nestled comfortably inside the cup, is not fully open. I inspect it closely, noticing that the outer petals look rather dull, and I realize that it began to wilt. I know I could easily replace it with one of the hundreds that grow outside, but to me, it's more than just a flower. It's not even about Rannoch giving it to me, I have plenty of mementos, but rather about the time that has passed since his departure. It's been four days, and although I've been kept busy, I'm not only missing him, but also now I'm growing incredibly worried. The talk of war at the villa, elders calling for Rannoch's blood, and Vol jesting about, po about a possible Sylvan uprise, it's all too much. Anything could have happened to those packs, and Rannoch's life is in danger either way. If he does come back unharmed, that doesn't mean he's safe. Besides, everyone talks about a rescue mission preparing for the worst. I worry he might have witnessed something horrible. They're all gone. A sudden chill fills my heart with the dread of, with the dread of death. If that's the case, if they all perished, I wouldn't even know how to console him. One lost friend would be bad enough, but losing a whole bunch of them could break a person. I take a deep breath, trying to steady my emotions. No matter what happened, I'll try to be there for him. You'll never be enough. I know. I reply in resignation. I know I matter little in the grand scheme of things. I'm just a leaf blown on the wind. But I'll be there for him, nonetheless. No matter what you say. 
I just want to see my wolf come back unharmed. He'll never come back. Enough! I feel a tear trickle down my right cheek, and it takes all my willpower not to break down completely. My tortured thoughts grow darker and darker to the point they no longer register. I'm defeated, almost as if mourning him already. I stand there for what feels like hours, gently petting the flower and succumbing deeper to fear. Any more, and I would have broken completely, but a decisive knock pulls me out of the stupor. I blink away any moisture and rub my cheek. I'm fully aware it's Vol. I recognize the forceful sound of his knuckles against the wood. I approach the doors and pull them wide open, mustering a welcoming smile. The wolf walks in, allowing me to close the doors behind him. Here's your chow, piglet. He passes me a linen bundle. Thanks. I accept and turn towards the table when his massive paw lands on my shoulder and stops me in my tracks. I face him slightly confused as his nose twitches awkwardly in my direction, as if picking on an odd scent. It's just lavender soap for us, I gave. I smell fear and anxiety. Huh? I blink, immediately put on a spot. Your heart is out of rhythm as well. What rattled you so? Fuck. Their mood detectors really make any attempt at a poker face completely pointless. I don't see any reason to lie to him either, although I'm sure he'll just brush it off as me being a whiny bitch. I'm just worried about Rannoch. It's been four days. I try to sound brave, but my voice wavers, and he picks on and he picks up on it immediately. Seriously, Piglet, he's an alpha. He's fine. You're being emotional again. Yep, there it is. Thanks, Vol. That cheered me up to no end. I shrug and brush away his paw. Since he can read me like an open book, I stop pretending and put my de despondency on full display. I plop the parcel onto the table and unravel the linen. Again, I find a selection of meat and cheeses, accompanied by two freshly baked rolls. But even this homely meal cannot bring a smile to my face, as all the joy got sucked out of me. I know that something pushes me to feel sad and hopeless. Helpless. But now is the right time... But now is not... But now is the right time to allow those feelings. I am worried. I am sad. Whispers are without. A deep sigh draws my attention back to the wolf, who looks at me with a resolute expression. Yesterday noon was the latest Rannoch would have reached the northern border. I guarantee he's already located the missing packs, and if they aren't on their way back yet, they soon will be. You have nothing to worry about. You keep saying that, but... Actually, no. The only thing you have to worry about is bringing his house up to scratch. The wolf interrupts, giving me a scornful look. There's no moonshine and the beer is nearly gone. Barely managed to fill a mug yesterday. And I can smell the sweaty linen all the way from here. Some good attendant you are. He scoffs mockingly and I feel thrown off. I bet you didn't even do his laundry. Your master is returning home from a long and exhausting mission and this is how you want to greet him? Despite his crude words, I smile, trying not to tear up, as I realize what he's doing. He is attempting to cheer me up and steal my resolve in his own volish way. He's driving the point home that Rannoch is, is coming back, and I couldn't be more grateful for this. I know it's not easy for him to show concern, so I decide to play along. I don't know where to get the beer from. Well, we can easily amend that. He walks towards the doors and opens them nonchalantly. I look at him confused as the male nods towards me. You coming? W what? Where? To the brewery. I can spare an hour or so. I'll help you stock up on booze for Rannoch's return. Laundry you'll have to do on your own. He sneers and I nod, laughing. For sure. I approach the doors only to stop at the last moment. I throw my gaze towards the table and decide to take the dandelion with me. I've kept it in the house for way too long. Perhaps some light m might help it unfold again. I push the flower into my pin and follow the wolf outside. We hop over the steps and Vol leads me towards the village center. As usual, zip it, piglet. Mm. I nod in agreement and silently follow. The cool morning breeze pushes the silk against my skin, and I have to admit, I began enjoying how sensual it feels. I don't think I wore silk before. I'm not surprised royalty dressed in, ex in it exclusively. It's so comfy. I'm enjoying my garments so much that only now I realize how the wolves scurry about. With Vol walking beside me, there are no evil eyes or growls from yesterday. I'll have to keep that in mind when I'm out alone. Those cowards are only barking when I'm without an alpha at my side. The tribe is very much up and running, with different shops open and bustling with activity. As we pass the stockades, I notice someone arguing with a fishmonger about their wares. In fact, you could smell the argument from afar. You dare to say my fish is old? Old? It's downright rotten! It stinks up the entire place. Come here and say it to my muzzle. Looks like it's about time to turn into a fist fight. I whisper softly, covering my nose and Vol chuckles. Yeah, wouldn't be the first time. We speed up slightly, trying to escape the undeniable stench of old fish. Definitely not a catch of the day, that's for sure. I mutter nasally as I'm pinching my nose. More like catch of last week.
view. Wipe that fucking smile off your face or we'll be poking your fucking dead body with a stick. This isn't natural. The black wolf laughs, visibly holding his breath, and I join in. It's nice to share a joke. We leave the built-up streets of the village, and the house has become scarcer and scarcer. The bad stench is left behind, and we're able to breathe freely. It would seem that we've arrived at the opposite edge of the settlement from Rannox Cottage. There's a clear path here, but no house is around, and we continue walking beneath the woodland canopy for a short while. Eventually, my nose is hit with a different, yet somewhat familiar smell, reminding me of plain cornflakes. An involuntary smile appears on my face as I reminisce about eating a bowl of dunked in cold milk. The vol notices and gives me a rather unsettled gaze. You're enjoying this? Oh yes, it's a smell of breakfast for me. Breakfast? Oh my. <laughs> the black wolf grimaces. It smells like pig chow to me. Then again, you are a piglet. Ha ha. As we approach a solitary homestead, roofed with what appears to be moss and grass, the smell intensifies and becomes less pleasant. It's sickeningly sweet now, overpowering even, and I finally cover my face with the shawl. A chubby wolf is standing in front of an open kiln topped with a massive copper vat. It boils and bubbles, the source of the aroma permeating the air. Tybalt. looks like a grandpa. Volgor! The wolves exchange cordial greetings, but the stranger quickly centers on me with a rather unsettled expression. And I see you've brought a visitor. Creepy looking thing. Don't act like you haven't seen him at the feast. Fuck, he's right. I recognize the male. He was one of the many onlookers Tano peddled me to. He even scored a petting of my head, which he now relives again through gently rough, through gentle ruffling of my hair. Haha, <laughs> I did, I did! The wolf concedes through a chuckle. I have a weak spot for creepy crawlies. And he calls me an insect. Anyway, what can I do you for? I've come to restock Rannox's cellar. Ha! Again? You need to stop raiding his supplies. I second that. Had not for Volk, we wouldn't have to be here in the first place. Why are you bitching about it? Keeps your business running, doesn't it? Fair, fair. The male nods again. So, what do you need? The usual? Nah. I need the stout Rannox likes. You have a spare barrel? I do, but that stuff ain't cheap. It's the one that goes to the villa. I know. It would seem you can take a wolf out of the palace, but you can't take the palace out of a wolf. Ranalk has some refined tastes. I'll also need moonshine, but the drinkable one. Triple distilled. Is someone feeling generous today? Tybalt laughs and walks towards his cottage. Once he disappears inside, I look to Vol with a mixed expression. He seems... nice. I say with slight irony. Keep quiet. The black wolf brushes it off and keeps his eyes drilled into the doorway. Eventually, the chubby wolf strolls out, holding a cl small clay flask in his paw similar to the one at Rannox's house. Nah, fuck your little bottles, give me one of them big flagons. Vol protests, pointing towards the workshop and a blink in shock at the sight of them. He must be five liters at least. An entire flagon? You need to pace yourself, lad. Agreed. I won't be taking drinking advice from the village drunk. Drunk? Bah. Tybalt takes the insult surprisingly well, simply laughing it off. I just need to make sure my wares are up to scratch. You don't see me taking a bite of out You don't see me taking a bite out of every slab I hand out. Meat is different. It's primitive and vulgar. He protests, pointing to the bubbling vat. This is art, boy. Very well. I'll remember that next time you'll come around my shop. Vol snickers. I'll make sure to give you the most primitive and vulgar cut I can find. Vindictive like your mother, I see. My eyes widen, and I hope there's more of their banter to come, but the wolf simply walks towards the assortment of barrels resting against his- <gasps> He actually has a real smile on his face. Wipe that fucking smile off your face, or I will wipe it off for you. My eyes- Nah. Anyway, one barrel and one flagon. You'll have that whelp take care of it. He pats one of them, nodding towards me, and I swallow heavily. In your dreams, old man. 
and break his arms, or worse yet, break the barrel, he can carry the moonshine. Kind of useless as a ward, isn't he? The wolf mutters, narrowing his brows as Will approaches him. It almost seems like you're taking it out for a walk. Unless you'd shove that flagon up my ass, I don't see how else we we carry it all back on my own. <laughs> fair, fair. Both wolves grab the topmost barrel and struggle to move it down. As it looks somewhat unstable with just the two of them, I rush to their side and, with what little strength I have, try to prevent the thing from tipping over. See? Not as useless as you'd think. The barrel thuds against the ground and Vol tilts it on its side, rolling along, rolling towards the pathway. Anyway, I'll have the same for myself. I'll just come and fetch it later. You're robbing me of a good week's work, boy. Tybalt laughs, walking beside us. Vol stops to roll up the kiln, straightening up and rummaging inside a small pouch on his back. He reveals a silver octagonal coin, flipping it to the chubby male. One Vither's token should cover that. I- huh. Tybalt is caught by surprise and nearly drops it. Vithers, you say? Well, I'll be damned. In that case, next week is on me. He laughs merrily, patting the black male. Not that I mind, but why? I have a long tab outstanding with that bastard. <laughs> Shoving his own token into his muzzle will get him off my back for the foreseeable future. Just stop drinking his wine and you should be fine. Vol shrugs and I nearly let out a chuckle. Volgor, I've been brewing beer and booze since you were a pup. Wine is all I have to left to enjoy. Then get used to sucking his dick. After all, he owns all the wine-producing burrows. Tybalt erupts in another bout of laughter. He reminds me a bit of Vither. Clever bastard, he controls the wheat too, so I'm afraid is heavily reliant on his. Wait, they own the burrows? That they... Not the Sylvan folk live it. Not the ones the Sylvan folk live in, I hope. Each wolf has his place. Said the village butcher. Between you and him, you control two thirds of the food around here. I guess my mother knew what she was doing. Set you up for life, that bitch did. My eyes wide my eyes open wide at the comment, and despite it being made in clear jest, Vol doesn't seem to take it kindly as his form slightly tenses up. I understand you're bitter, but she's still my mother. Wouldn't want to break your jaw on top of your broken heart. I blink at the last comment while the brewer laughs. No offense meant. One day you'll understand, lad. You will. Trust me, that day already came. Huh. Now I'm really curious about Vol's mom, but my rampant thoughts are brought to a halt as Tybalt's paw lands on my shoulder. Mind lending me a paw, we bugger? He opens a small jar filled with what looks like a cross between an acorn and a Brussels sprout. Despite the off-putting appearance, they smell quite lovely, like fresh-cut grass. See those? Fetch me a pawful from the shed. He joins his paw together and puts the wooden hut nestling against his house. They'll be in big bags like those. His paw then indicates the wheat sack, the big sacks of wheat, and I simply nod. Where's your son? Shouldn't he be helping you around? My son? Ha! <laughs> He's the one who needs all the help he can get. He's most likely chasing ghosts through the wood again. The woods again. I open the door with a slight creak and disappear into the storehouse. It's filled to the brim with different barrels and bags. Is it still that bad? Honestly, he never really recovered. The pillow-shaped ones are obviously filled with grain, but there are four big Santa-like sacks at the very back. I untie one of them and take a sniff. Bingo. He's a wolf without a purpose or a place in the tribe. He gave up on himself a long time ago, and so I followed suit. No point setting yourself up for another disappointment. It's hard to discern anything over the potent aroma of boiled wheat. There's an inkling of a scent somewhere here I very much want to get to. It's a smell of the forest, very akin to what Ranok smells like. I retrieve one of the grand sp green sprouts and take a deep breath. Nope, that's not the one. I'm sorry to hear that. I really did try. He was just... It's fine, Vol. It's not your responsibility to carry other wolves' weight. I untie the second bag and immediately smile. This is the one. This one smells like my wolf. I grab a handful as requested and walk outside. He was never much of a warrior, nor is he especially spiritual when you think about it. I'm not surprised he ended up how he did. I've decided to give him until the to the equinox. If he doesn't get his shit together, I'll send him off. Where to? First to his mother, then as the ancestors will. I'm done being the village laughing stock. I allow their exchange to finish before presenting my find to the male. To my surprise, his snout his snout his snout twitches and he lightens up. Damn, he's got a good nose, that one. Wouldn't be my first choice of hops, but might be exactly what I need. He puts the sprouts into the jar and rubs his paws together, causing Vol to look curiously at the bubbling vat. What's that you're brewing? A new blend. I've got bored and cooked up the s I've got bored cooking up the same old stuff. 
I dusted off some recipes, but found nothing remotely inspiring, so I'm winging it. The bunnies had a very odd year, and their hops were of varied quality. I've been tinkering with different ratios. This one's quite floral. Speaking of, he looks to my pin and points at the dandelion. That gives me an idea. I haven't done dandelion wine in quite a while. Oh, you can make wine of that stuff? Of course, quite tasty too. Very much akin to mead. Tybalt smiles with in satisfaction. Used to be Aileen, Aileen's favorite. I brewed cask, I brewed casks full of stuff back in the day. Those were the times. I can see Fool's expression sour, and he readjusts himself uncomfortably. We better get going. I'll fetch my stock before the feast. He mutters, bending over the barrel and giving me a telling look before rolling it off towards the town. Sure thing. That's an oddly abrupt way to end a conversation. But I simply grab the large flagon, bow respectfully to the wolf, and rejoin Vol at his side. I'm glad I'm not the one rolling that keg, but the moonshine isn't exactly light either. I cradle the bottle against my chest and we walk for a while in silence, allowing some distance between us and Tybalt's house. Finally, when we're in the clear, I cannot contain my curiosity any longer. Who's Eileen? Don't go there, piglet. Vol mutters, and although he doesn't sound angry, he's quite stern. Forget that name, and if you value your life, don't ever bring it up. I take it she's your mother. I conclude to which he only scoffs. You're deaf and dumb. She's not my mother. Okay, so what was that all about? Look, it has nothing to do with me, and it's certainly, and certainly, it has fuck all to do with you. His voice takes on a more serious tone. We don't talk about her in this tribe, and definitely do not mention her Rannoch. I'm pretty confused about this warning, but something tells me it's a good idea to listen. And from context, I get a feeling that Eileen might be Rannoch's mother, making the whole conversation more troubling. Is she in the files? Wait, we might be able to deduce if she is, based on the files. Okay, so she's not in the uh, first one. Is she in the second one? Uh, no. No, she isn't. Damn. Something must have happened. Something bad. You're overthinking shit again, Piglet. Vol mutters, drawing my attention. He clearly picked up on my shift of mood. Sorry, you're right. I chuckle and seize this opportunity to tease him. So, Tibble was in love with your mom. I assume unrequitedly. Fuck knows. The black wolf shrugs. Mother liked attention, just like all females do. She led a lot of wolves on. He was just the last one to get that. I almost wanted to say that's quite ironic coming from him, but decide not to. Where's your mother now? She moved to be with her current mate. In another tribe? Nah, in another village south of here. Just as I thought, there are more places like this in the forest. Despite the appearance of being quite settled, they don't seem to be staying in one place for long. Do you miss her? Miss her? The wolf scoffs. She hardly could shut up, constantly yapping and growling. Kinda like you. I was glad to see her back after my great feat. Once she was gone, I could finally have some peace and quiet. They're all crazy. Do you visit her? What for? I seem to be amusing him with my line of questioning, and the mockery in his voice becomes apparent. I don't know, because she's your mom? What am I, an unweaned pup needing a tit to suckle on? He gives me a telling look, insinuating that's exactly what I sound like to him. I roll my eyes. We all have our lives, Piglet. Just because you have a pup, just because you have a pup doesn't mean you stop living. I've got my life, she's got hers. She did her job, as was expected of her. And in fact, she did it better than most. She earned the right to move on. No denying that, he's doing quite well for himself. <laughs> she can definitely be proud of you, that's for sure. I smile reassuringly and manage to draw another subtle tail swish from the male. We enter the village in silence, as it's not safe for me to continue talking. The wolves pay us no mind, despite the loud creaking of the barrel across the pathway. I guess that's another perk of being in the company of the most notorious wolf in the tribe. Vol seems to be on the lookout, obviously worried we might stumble upon something he'd rather avoid. But so far, so good. As much as I hate doing it, my hands grow rather sore, and I have to plop down the jug to take a few moments rest. Vol stops his roll and looks up to me with clear annoyance, but all I can do is shrug apologetically. Carrying five liters around is not something I'm used to. As I rub my arms to do away with the cramps, I notice Tano in the distance. He has a rather mischievous smile upon spotting me and begins heading in our direction when he suddenly notices Vol. His quick and comedic change... His quick and comedic change of mind comes with little surprise, and the wolf quickly marches off in the opposite direction. The motherfucker walked up 
wrote, turned 360 degrees and walked the other direction. I chuckle and pick up my jug, nodding to Vol that we can continue. What's so funny? He looks confused and clearly unaware of this little near miss. Nothing. I mutter in amusement. I decide to let the white wolf off the hook. When we arrive at the cottage, Vol brings the barrel to a stop and I observe as he stretches his muscular back. He arches himself a few times with a satisfied groan, clearly getting rid of a cramp, and then points to the shed. Grab me two thick logs, long enough to scale the steps. I nod and walk over there, rummaging through the various pieces of wood. Once I return with his query, he grabs the logs and places them over the stairs, re creating a ramp. Again, I admire his body, his body tense as he struggles slightly to push the barrel onto the wood, but he's strong enough to make it happen. The gravity gives in before his bulging biceps and the wolf simply rolls the barrel up the stairs as if it was a trifle. You done gawking? He snickers, noticing my intense gazes, and I shake my head as he resets the barrel in to an upright position. Put them back. I do as asked, and once I return, he's already moving into the kitchen, wobbling it from side to side. I like his ingenuity. I probably would have given up, un given up unable to roll the damn thing through the narrow door frame. He stops at the table and moves the old barrel out of the way while I close the door. Once he's at the new cask in its place, he releases a long sigh. What should I do with this? I shake the jug. Put it in the cupboard. I thought we would split this. It's quite a lot of booze. Considering the frequency with which we now visit this house, I'd say it's adequate. There's four of us, after all. True, I suppose. I smile and approach the cupboard. Maybe unintentionally, but he just counted me as one of them. As I hide the jug inside one of the compartments, Vol lifts the empty barrel as if it were an oversized mug and chugs down the remaining liquid. I watch as some of it spills over his chin and drifts onto his pecs, slowly trickling down his chiseled torso down to his underbelly. Damn, that's hot. Fuck, I really am pent up. I need to stop objectifying people. What? N nothing I blurt out, locking my embarrassed gaze with the floor, causing the wolf to do the same. Oh, sorry about that. He responds to noticing the puddle he created and mistaking my fluster for annoyance over the spill. It's fine, I'll take your advice and do a bit of housekeeping. And now that I know where the spring's at, I can also do Rannox dirty laundry. I try not to linger in this awkwardness. It was a joke, although I'm sure he'd appreciate it. The wolf scoffs, rubbing his chin clean. Well, it'll give me something to do and occupy my mind. It's just... I pause, looking around. Just what? I'll have to hang it to dry, but I didn't s see any laundry racks outside. The wolf smirks and approaches the cupboard, opening the middle drawer and removing a large loop of rope. Here, Rannoch uses this. He passes it to me, and I immediately recognize it. I was bounded with Rannoch's clothes line? Um, ugh, you're so clueless at times. You span it between the trees and the cottage. My confusion, my confused expression is again misread by the wolf, and I chuckle. I know what to do with it. Then what's the problem? It's just a bit absurd, don't you think? Last week you bound me with this, and now I'm going to dry laundry on it. I shake the rope in my hand. Life's full of surprises, isn't it? He shrugs, but is unable to deny that the situation is somewhat funny, and lets out a subdued laugh. Once our joint merriment subsides, he grabs the empty barrel by the rim and approaches the doors. Right, gotta go, piglet. You sit tight. The guards won't be giving you any trouble. If they do, flash them my token. Should set them straight. He sneers in amusement, and I almost blush, reminded that I even got it. You haven't lost it yet, have you? No, I have it right here. I point towards the cupboard. Good. Just steer, just stay clear from the village today. Why's that? There's word that Drod was going around asking questions. I wouldn't like you to run into him, not while he's excitable. Excitable? What is it, Drod or Dr No, Drawn. Oh, that old fuck. I subdue a chuckle. That's one way of putting it. Yeah, those old timers rarely, if ever, bother, bother with the plebs, unless they're out sniffing. And the last one we want them to sniff around is you. True. You take care, piglet. He bobs his head respectively and leaves, allowing me to go about my day. We're going to leave off here tonight. heavens hmm. I will not be uh, live tomorrow we 
because there's some stuff going on and I just need to like, yeah. So I'm going to hop off and then immediately hop back on to uh, make a TikTok on here. Do what you will. You can if you want. Anyways, uh, stay safe, have a good night, and I'll see you tomorrow, if not within, like, ten minutes.